Yeah. <laughs> right? I've learned a lot about the music. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, my name is Brian Layton. I'm the Assistant County Manager. I'm here with Janelle Lynn and Katrina Jenkins. Thank you both for being here. Um, and I'll just point out behind you, Janelle, what, what's all that stacked up behind you there? Oh, we have some PPE here, some masks, gloves, things like that. Okay. Uh, so thank you, appreciate your time. Um, why don't we just remind you folks of your role and just a little bit about yourselves real quick. Uh, my name is Janelle Lynn. I'm the health director here at Navajo County Public Health. Um, oversee um, all public health services and I've been with Navajo County for a little over 21 years. So Janelle, I, I apologize, but right now when you took off your mask, it gave you a filter on oh. your face with sunglasses and a hat. <laughs> Uh, yes, it is. It, it, I'm not. I'm really not sure how that happened. Because I would rather be on the beach. There you go. Um, I'm not sure if it's going to do it to you too, Katrina. Okay. Uh, let's let, let's, let's, let's so find out what happens. Go okay. for it. Katrina Jenkins, Navajo County Emergency Manager, and I've been with the county 20 years this May, and I am helping coordinate all the fun stuff with COVID. So, unfortunately, it didn't give Another you... Another man. Well, so, Janelle's the special one. <laughs> yes, so she got the... It came with little sunglasses and a hat. I don't sure know what happened. Um, well, regardless of sunglasses and hats, um, can you give us a little bit uh, of a, just a general COVID update? I've, as we've been reporting the numbers uh, every day on, on Facebook, which we do at, at, the, at Navajo County on Facebook, so those daily updates are there. Um, consistently over the past probably two or three weeks, we've seen much lower numbers of new cases every day. Right. Um, what is that kind of telling you about what's going on and, and what's happening in the community? Uh, our second spike of cases was, can you hear me? Or, or do we try this on your eyes? Okay. <laughs> anyway, our first, our second spike of cases uh, started in the fall and it took a while to climb. And when it got to the, the peak, it stayed there for a while. At the peak in Navajo County, we were seeing um, around 400, 410 cases a day. Uh, it dropped pretty quickly. Um, our, our, second speak, our second peak peaked in the, in the middle of January, um, around that 410 mark, and then we came down and now we're seeing seven, eight, nine, no more than 20 cases usually a day. So that says to us there's less disease circulating in our community. That can be to a lot of, uh, due to a lot of different factors. Vaccines are um, out on the market and, and being pushed out. Uh, the, the winter break for students coincided with the time that would account for that. The holidays are over, people aren't gathering as much. It's starting to warm up and people are able to get outside. There's a lot of factors that play into that, but we do feel we're at the bottom of that second uh, peak. Okay, so even, even when the case number is low, public health nurses are still um, verifying each case mm -hmm. um, that's reported to us and then that follow-up, what is that follow-up like that they're doing when they, when they call somebody? So they're still doing the contact tracing for all positives, uh, determining where, that helps us figure out where you may have been exposed and who you possibly could have exposed once you become infectious. And so we trace those out and monitor those patients and continue with that same process. Uh, since we don't need quite as many helpers when our cases are low, then we're having some of our um, other nurses and support staff help us with vaccine efforts. Okay, fantastic. Um, so another thing that's in the news a lot is asking about variants, mm -hmm. like COVID variants. Like what is a variant? What are we seeing? What can you tell us about that? So variant is kind of a synonymous word. It can also be interchangeable with a strain. Um, a mutation, uh, so that kind of all means the same thing. So it's just a different strain of the COVID virus. So it's um, it's kind of mutated a little, and it's it's just a little different strain of the virus. There are three uh, primary variants that have been identified. There's the United Kingdom strain, a South African strain, and a Brazilian strain. We have, do have all three of those strains have been identified in the United States. However, only one strain has been identified thus far in Arizona. That is the United Kingdom strain, and we have six of those uh, to date in the state of Arizona. So far, none have been identified in Navajo County. 
but we are watching for that. And variants can be unique. Um, they can appear, kind of hang out for a while and then mutate out, or they can appear, hang out for a while and become more virulent, or which means more infectious or sometimes they come hang out and just don't really change. So we watch variants really closely because they can do a lot of different things. So do we know as of yet, um, the vaccines that are out there right now, do they work with these new variants? What, what do we know about that? So the, the variants that are circulating right now do seem to be more virulent or more infectious than the original strain. So we're watching them very closely and they are watching constantly um, assessing if it appears that the vaccine is remaining effective against the variant. So far, the vaccines that are on the market, the mRNA vaccines, which are Pfizer and Moderna, they are uh, still showing efficacy against those variant strains. We're getting close to getting some different vaccines um, on the market, and so it'll be interesting to see um, in early studies in other countries, those are not appearing to be quite as effective against the variant strain. Okay. So we start. We started talking about vaccines. Um, uh, there's been in the news that there may be some new vaccines coming out. So uh, tomorrow, the Johnson and Johnson product, which is called a, the Jensen vaccine, goes before the FDA. Uh, if it passes the FDA, it very realistically could be on the market by next week. They're telling us they don't have large supplies of this vaccine yet at the manufacturer. So it's not something um, that's going to be immediately um, impacting the vaccine supply. And they're telling us that in Arizona, we probably won't even see it until mid or late March, but that could be coming. It is a one dose series. Um, it's a different technology than the, the vaccines we have out right now. It's a one dose series and it is a little less effective um, than the vaccines that we have now, the two dose series vaccines. So we'll be watching that closely and looking at, um, are there certain populations who may benefit more from uh, one type versus the other? Okay. Um, so speaking of the, the ones that we use predominantly here is the Moderna vaccine, right? Right. Um, what can you tell us about the availability of that vaccine You know, this week? So we just found out what our allotment for this week was. We only got 2,000 doses for Navajo County. Uh, and 500 of those uh, have to go to account for second doses for people who are going to be next week too for their second dose. But that did give us 1,500 new doses to push um, out into our population this week, which we're happy with. We do have good vaccine um, coverage rates. The state of Arizona is at about a 17% coverage rate, which means 17% of the population has been vaccinated. And we are slightly above that. Uh, today's rate, we are at eight, just a little above 18%. And we uh, have lots of our facilities have big clinics uh, today. So I expect that number could go up significantly uh, by tomorrow. Okay. So we're, uh, that says to us that the vaccine that we're pushing out, once we're receiving it, we're pushing it out very quickly. Our county also has very low wastage rates, which means it's getting into bodies, it's not expiring, it's being used in a timely manner. We just need more vaccine. A good steady supply of vaccine for us is going to be at least 4,000 doses a week consistently. Oh. Okay, so what we got this week is about half, of what well not even quite on. half of new vaccines of what we would, okay. So in a so I think what I heard you there is our partnerships with local providers are going really well. That, they are. Because we're, we're helping to coordinate as, they, as the vaccines come in, but they're the ones boots on the ground that are actually getting it in, not wasting it, making sure appointments are filled. Mm -hmm. So we're also offering vaccines here out of our Shola Public Health Building, but our uh, healthcare partners are doing that as well. And so we allocate out to the different agencies and the, schedule, um, the public can schedule appointments based on you know, which facility they prefer or convenience for them or where they can find an appointment. But we really appreciate our partners and all the work they've gone to to assist us to get vaccine out to the public. Awesome. And after you get uh, a dose, they, they ask you to sign up for um, the VSAFE do you, do you know about it? Yeah. Can you so tell us about, a little all about that? All the providers have a poster that has a QR code. And if you haven't used those before, it's pretty cool. If you have a smartphone, 
you just turn on your camera feature on your smartphone and you point it at that little weird dot square looking thing. And once you do that, it's going to take you to the link for that app. And that app, you sign up for it, it checks on you, it's from FEMA, and it just kind of gives you a check-in, how are you doing, are you feeling okay, do you need it, you know, do you need to see a doctor maybe, or anything like that. And it follows you for several weeks, and it, it does um, help kind of track what's going on if there's a bad reaction. Luckily, we haven't had a whole lot of bad reactions with Moderna, it's been really good. So when you say it follows you, what it means is it, it, send, it, <laughs> so, it, it sends you a text it every day, text. right? Yeah, sorry. And, um. and it's up to you to respond to that text. And like when you start, um, after you, you're feeling fine after a couple of days, yeah. you just say stop and you text back stop and you opt out uh, of them of them uh, reaching out to you again. But they're 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 asking how you feel, but why, why are they trying to gather all that information? What's the benefit there? So they want to make sure that the vaccine is doing what it's supposed to do and, and helping you be well. Um, but also that if there is some a large population that's adversely affected by the vaccine, that helps us kind of send a red flag and we get to tap on Janelle's shoulder and go, okay, we've got to track this down, what's going on? And so that helps us make sure that there's a good vaccine and not something that went wrong in yeah. storage or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. It would, it would, it's a really easy and, and convenient way to gather a lot of data on the population yeah. to make sure that the product is still doing what it should. And it's From safe. a lot of people yeah. all over the country. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, making appointments. We, we still get questions about making appointments <laughs> and how do they get scheduled to get a, a dose. What can you tell us about that? I got any to recommendations? Take off my glasses. I'm fogging up here. Okay. Sorry. Um, yeah, making appointments. We so understand the frustration with the, with the system. We get it, we get it, we get it, and we feel bad about it. Um, there's a couple reasons why we're still using that system. Um, this, the state got that created just for COVID, and they're still working on updates and things, so hopefully it'll get better. Um, but that system helps us track the doses that are going into arms. Um, and that's the most critical thing. We need to make sure that we have accurate numbers on that so that we're being good stewards of the vaccine. Um, part of the, the confusion sometimes is the registration versus making an appointment. So once you've registered on the site, you're in the site, but you have to go in and actually book an appointment. Just like you're booking for a hotel or an airline ticket, you register for the site, but then you have to book for the appointment. Um, unfortunately, one of the things that causes a lot of confusion with that is it doesn't show any available appointments a lot of times because so many people are so quick on the draw and just watching that constantly, they jump in there and take all the appointments just as soon as new appointments are set up. So. The best thing to do is please understand we know <laughs> how frustrating it is, but be patient and just keep checking. Um, more vaccine, we have been assured by the state and by the feds that more vaccine is on the way. So that will make more appointments available as we go through this process. Um, okay, but it's, then keep in mind it's a two-step process. You go and you yeah. register. And then you make an appointment. I like the, the analogy to a, a travel website, right? You log into the Travelocity, but then you have to still choose your flight and time right. and date and everything. So it's a two-step. Yeah. And it won't just hold your name and send it to a facility. It's not like a waiting list. You're not going to get a call from us. You have to actually book the appointment through that site. Okay. Good one. So uh, talking about scheduling and stuff, um, a lot of questions about uh, we've, we've used the Ackerman pod. The pod model pod versus model. versus the, the provider model. Um, wh what are our thoughts there kind of this week? Because I know this is evolving all the time, but kind of this week, what are your thoughts and, and, and what are you planning now on the pod model versus the provider model? <laughs> so right now we're using what we are calling affectionately um, the provider model. 
we're using our healthcare providers, our pharmacy providers to distribute vaccine. Um, and it's going great. We have 104% um, vaccination rate, which is even higher than Maricopa County, if you can believe it. So um, the pod model is when you actually drive to a location such as what you've heard in the news as State Farm Stadium or something like that. We've practiced that at our fire stations a lot and even Summit Regional Medical Center has a pod site and you drive through and you get a shot and then you're done. Um, that's a pod. It's a point of distribution. Like, like we do with the flu vaccine. Like we do with the flu vaccine okay. every fall. Yeah. So um, like Janelle said, we just don't have quite enough to open up the pods in Navajo County yet. And we don't have enough effective. vaccine. We don't have enough, enough vaccine. vaccine. Right. Yes. We have the, we have the locations. We have the people. We have the, we have the, training, the we training. We have everything. Yeah. We, at this okay. point, we just don't have enough vaccine to make an effective pod happen. Um, that would do so we're constantly evaluating what's effective and realistic versus what we want to do and that's to get people vaccinated so it takes a lot of resources to set up a pod it takes a lot of staffing resources and time and logistical pieces for vaccine storage and temperature control and so if you don't have a steady supply of vaccine coming in to feed that pod, it's kind of a waste of resources to keep setting it up and taking it down and setting it up and taking it down. So we need that consistent flow um, so that we're not wasting resources. And then also at the flow we're getting right now, the number of vaccines we're getting now, our provider partners are easily able to keep up and distribute that out for us. Okay. And they're, they're, they like it. They like being able to help their communities and, and provide that service. Yeah. So if, uh, if at a later date we get a more consistent flow, a higher flow of vaccines, uh, doing some pod point of dispensing sites is, could be something that we consider and, and execute, right? Absolutely. Okay. Well, you guys have done such a good job that I don't see any questions come in. <laughs> Unless I've missed it. I haven't seen a question come through. Uh, is there anything that we've missed or we need to add? You know, just um, bear with us. We know you want the vaccine. We want you to have the vaccine um, just as much as you want to have it. So um, we're doing everything we, t we advocate every week with the state and the state continues to advocate every week to the feds so that we can get more vaccine in Arizona. So keep your fingers crossed and stay positive and stay kind, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I, I, we got to be kind to each other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you reminded one last question, maybe, um, uh, adverse reactions to the vaccine. Okay. Um, we've talked about that in the past. Has, has any change that you're seeing in folks of how they're reacting? Is, you know, uh, here in Navajo County, I have not had, um, any reports of anaphylactic reactions, which means trouble breathing, you know, swelling in the throat, rash. We almost like an them. allergic reaction yeah. almost. Okay. We haven't had uh, any reports of those. We have had a few reports of some rashes and itching, which could, might could be a mild, um, allergy. We are, however, seeing several people, uh, I would have to guess around 70% that when they get that second dose are getting those flu-like symptoms, body aches, chills, some are even running a uh, temperature, headache, fatigue. That is expected with the vaccine. That means your body is surmounting an immune response and building immunity to the COVID virus. It is expected. It doesn't mean you got a bad vaccine or you got COVID or, you know, things like that. It's to be expected. And that's partly what that Be Safe app tracks so that they can see how many people are experiencing this, what kind of symptoms are they experiencing, and get a, a feel for what's happening. Okay, fantastic. Well, uh, Janelle, um, Katrina, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thank you.